It's now my pleasure to introduce the first of today's expert witnesses, Jay Kolar. Jay Kolar is a freelance writer in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. As a film studies instructor, he has taught courses in film analysis and mass media at Lane Community College, the University of Iowa, and the University of California at Los Angeles, UCLA. A specialization in French film theory, semiotics, and close structuralist analysis of film stimulated his critical response to the events of September 11, 2001, leading him to examine more closely the available 9-11 footage and subsequent releases of bin Laden and alleged hijacker last will and testament martyrdom videos. Jay Kolar is the author of an essay, What We Now Know About the Alleged 9-11 Hijackers, in The Hidden History of 9-11, a book edited by Paul Zaremka and first published by Elsevier Press in 2006. He supplemented this essay with an update in the expanded edition published in 2008 by Seven Stories Press in New York. Jay Kolar will present his evidence on the subject of the alleged 9-11 hijackers during the coming 45 minutes. For a further 15 minutes, he'll be engaging with questions from our panelists. Jay Kolar. I want to change that title to the 9-11 hijackers that weren't. I, oh, I say that because the U.S. government's story, upon close examination of the evidence, of which I'm only going to be able to present a small segment today, reveals an accumulation of flaws, distortions, omissions, video forgeries, alterations of the alleged hijackers' timelines, fabricated evidence, planted evidence, substitutions of names and doubles for the alleged, intimidation of eyewitnesses and whistleblowers, and up to now, media, media blacking out of, protect, of protected activities of some of the alleged who had deep political connections. Under the weight of all these flaws, the official story collapses. We begin with the FBI's initial list of hijackers, which should have been released concurrently with a flight manifest that were never released after the FBI had quickly confiscated them. The FBI said it had located its suspects from those manifests, not to be mistaken for the passenger lists made available by the airlines, which contained none of the 19 names. But within 24 hours, CNN had acquired this first FBI list from U.S. Customs, and one of the relevant, relevant uh, Customs officials is Robert Bonner but it contained five names, a Moziar Kanid on Flight 77, and four others, Adnan Bukhari, Amir Bukhari, Amir Kamfar, and Abdul Rahman Alamari. From the Flight 11 manifest, names that the FBI dropped and replaced with Walid Anwail Al-Sheri, Satam El sukami and Abdul Aziz Alamari. Logically, that would mean that there should have been, including the, the name of Mohammed Atta on that first flight, 11, who had not been replaced by a substitute, at least nine Arab names from which to choose, but there weren't. Since none of the uh, airline lists, which only contain passengers minus hijacker names, contain any of those Arab names, which were changed by the FBI, uh, were changes the FBI had implemented, therefore tampering with crime scene evidence. It is important to note that reputable documented sources verified that at least nine of the FBI's second and final list of 19, the ones depicted here, were alive, were still alive after 9-11, with proof that at least one other, Zia Jara, or Jara, had his identity doubled. The doubles photo on a US visa, one third singed by the crash, showing, showing someone who resembled more a young Tom Jones, the singer, I don't know if you're familiar with him, and the real Jara's identity therefore fabricated and Jara himself framed. Nevertheless, the FBI has refused to make the necessary corrections to exonerate those 10 out of the 19 falsely accused. Okay, PowerPoint page number one, or is that the one? Um, no, keep going, keep going, I'm sorry. Um, it, it's the, uh, the one with the, uh, that's it, go back one, yeah, okay. First I'm starting with um, the U.S. government's best evidence, which we'll, we will see is actually the worst evidence of hijackers, the Dulles Airport video. 
uh, compare that um, the dullest video still to a Portland jet port, jet port video still on the left. The only other video we have of the alleged boarding planes on 9-11 was the one from the Jetland, uh, Portland jet port where in the frame on the left, Atta and Aziz Alamari proceeded to board a connecting flight, not, not the flight 11 that crashed. While this disqualifies it at, as evidence of a flight that crashed, it does show the verifiable airport security data, which continues throughout the video's duration. The date, digital ongoing time of clock, a uh, time of day, excuse me, and the closed circuit TV identification number, which reveals the, the camera's location. All necessary to authenticate an event as well as the video itself. The absence of such data on the still from the Dulles Airport video, on the other hand, which is on the right, is, uh, where am I? Is the first of six major problems we have with it. Unlike the, the, uh, the Portland video, and unlike every other airport surveillance video we've seen, it lacks verifiable authenticity, authenticity excuse me, which can only come from imprinted security data, the date, the digital ongoing clock, and camera number. Researcher Joe Vials in 2004 through his connections, was able to obtain this uh, a Dulles Airport package, including uh, outdoor photos of 9-11 Dulles Terminal. Okay, the, can I see the next one? Um, no, that terminal view. There it is. Well, that's not his terminal view, but that's, that's a sample representative of what it looks outside the terminal. Um, I, I couldn't get the original because uh, his his site has been uh, closed down. Okay. I lost my place. Um, okay. I'm sorry, I lost my place. Okay, uh, Vial's meticulously examined every inch of the Dulles video blown up over 20 times, but he could find no trace of edited out security data, thus lacking imprinted security data on the entire tape, standard for all airport videos, and without evidence to indicate erasure, there is no possibility that the Dulles video is authentic, hence the probability that is a forgery. Devoid of such security data, both as a, as a security video and as evidence of an event to be used in a court of law, what possible use could this video have? Located at an airport security checkpoint, a security camera that records without imprinting security data is completely suspect. Second, the presence of Salam al-Hazmi and Khalid al-Midhar allegedly preparing to board Flight 77 introduces the second problem. Both he and al-Midhar turned up still alive after 9-11. In al-Midhar's case, one report comes from the FBI itself, which warned all banks to watch for him after 9-11. Quote, on September 19th, on September 19th, 2001, the FDIC distributed an official document clearly stating that Al Midhar is alive. As for Salem, he testified for himself that on 9-11 he was working at a Saudi petrochemical complex in Yanbu, Saudi Arabia. A third problem stems from the exterior lighting and shadows covered by Paul Zaremka, following on Vial's research on the exterior views in the Dulles video package he received. A Dulles airport terminal exterior view shows the time would be around midday and not 7.18 a.m. when the hijackers allegedly entered the security checkpoint. The exterior lighting is too bright and the shadows are wrong for an early Washington, D.C. September morning. Okay, this photograph is simply a representative view, a sample, because uh, the, the other is not available at this time from Joe Vial's uh, closed down website. But this sample exterior Dulles view suffi suffices to show the immediate proximity of roadway just outside with a windowed entrance to the terminal, screen right. In this perspective, the security camera inside the security checkpoint is pointing screen left, which is north and directly at the most, mostly windowed wall and entrance in the background. Um, maybe we can see a view of that, um, can you just, um, of the interior Dulles. Um, Airport. Just um, yeah, keep going. Hmm? That one. You know, that's the 
that's the interior. You notice the bright light coming out of the background um, from the windows and the glass door. Okay. Um, what I wanted you to notice here was, is that um, when we roll the video, you'll see one could expect to see some traffic in that background. We're going to hold off on that for now. And uh, we, we, we obviously don't. Um, it would be passing from left to right. And uh, that, that, that is in the 2006 video uh, release of, or after, that was found in the Musawi trial documents. But before that, all we had was, uh, anyway, you, not once does a vehicle pass by in the background, and we're going to watch that in a minute. Absence of any background traffic movement, therefore, also undermines the, the video's authenticity. It took three years for the original um, release of the Dulles Airport video in 2004, in a heavily edited, and they only showed heavily edited versions of between 57 seconds and 150, well, two and a half minutes in duration, out of a possible 22 minutes from first to last alleged hijacker, which is a maximum of only 10 percent of total duration. And I'm thinking that those initial versions have poor, grainier resolution than most security videos due partially to the bright sunshine streaming in, and about twice the brightness expected when facing this northern perspective at 7.18 a.m. Bright backlight tends to wash out the resolution, indicating, also indicating the taping time around noon or so. That is, unless the camera inside the building is not facing north, in which case this could not be Dulles. Either way, the authentic authenticity of this video is undermined. To make vi uh, viewing even more difficult, Face, uh, we, can we get a view of the um, video now? I don't know where you have the video, but don't run it. Yeah, just leave it still. Just, yeah. Um, to make viewing even more difficult in the current vi version we have now from the Musawi trial documents, faces, no, that's not it, um, the, the video, yeah, okay. Faces, there we go. This is an example. In the 2006 version, are smudged out, not digitally, uh, but they are disguised to prevent recognition. Somebody, it looks like somebody took some sort of eraser on the film and just emulsified the uh, over the faces. Why would the U.S. government prevent its citizens from recognizing both the alleged and other passengers and officials? And why, in the 2004 original version? Did they release only 57 seconds to 150 max seconds max? Um, in this minuscule Dulles Airport video versions, in which 90% of total duration has been deleted and a, an obvious smudging of faces, noticeable as passengers come into focus in the foreground and obfuscate the remaining 10%. When all versions of the Dulles video have been made available in such a parsimonious way, and then only after family members had successfully sued for its release, the resultant effect is one of cover-up, not presentation of evidence. Okay, the fifth problem of the camera movement and, and visual, of camera movement and visual manipulation, both of which I described in my chapter in 2000, which came out in 2006, at which time only the 2004 version, which was heavily edited, edited um, of the Dulles video was available. This heavy editing, editing included cuts or splices, multiple sized, multiple sized views or shots of various sizes, medium shots, close-ups, and two inexplicable establishing long shots. But only one you'd expect from a closed circuit TV camera, and also camera movement. Especially this camera movement appears in a, um, in a shot which, which lasts 38 seconds in the, in the Court TV 150-second version from 2004, which is follow-on action, zoomed in. We, uh, by the way, I, I can't find that version anymore because that site has, has changed and it's no longer available. But, that, but there's evidence of, of the changes. Maybe, no, hold on. Well, in that previous photograph that you saw, there's evidence of changes. No, okay, yeah, um, just right in this one. You, if you look at the floor stripe, it's moved. So you can see both, if you, you shoot the, 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 the closed circuit TV camera in the ceiling is in one place at one time and in six to eight feet to the right in another time. 
those, you, you didn't notice it. Nobody noticed it when they saw it because of this 38 second slow motion, zoomed in close up of the alleged El Midhar walking left to right in a, you know, in, in more of a medium close up in the foreground, which intervenes between those two shots. The one shot presented the first two hijackers who arrived, and the, and the last shot showed the other two. Which it's impossible in a, in a purely me mechanical operation of a closed circuit TV camera. It betrays human intervention, selection, and exclusion of other passengers, not possible in the alleged closed circuit camera the commission tells us we are getting our viewing experience from. It's no longer available uh, from the court TV, type, TV site, but as I said, the photograms that we have uh, are still happily available. And they reveal, besides the aforementioned evidence, the distinctly two uh, camera setups. Are we then to conclude that there are two airport surveillance cameras embedded in the ceiling? Okay, uh, next one. So you can see the, the camera stripe moves. But we don't have any of this in the, in the current 2000 released version where they decided to leave all the editing out and just show you one view that was shot from above the, uh, the center floor line, or centered over the floor line. Um, simultaneously with this new second setup after the intervening 38 seconds of uh, um, El Midhar, uh, yeah, another problem has occurred. The, uh, the Hanjur. Yeah. The 150 second court TV version, which temporarily the longest of the 2004 version, has somehow neglected to include anyone showing up as the pilot Hanjur, in quotes, between the arrival of the two duos. In the shortest uh, version, ironically, the 57 second one, there is a very brief glimpse of a man, but he's not Hanjur. He looks like the man in the photo on your re left, the dark clove man, all right? Um, Change the shirt. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't think so. The overall difficulty in viewing these versions made available to the public is that they contain only a mere fraction of the approximately 22 minutes of this Dallas footage that's going by the commissions uh, noting that they, the, arrival, the time of arrival of the first alleged hijackers, the pair, and the, and the uh, arrival of the last pair. The darkly dressed, fully bearded, heavier set mystery man in this, in the 2004 Dulles video, small version, appears starring in the role of Hanjur. Um, maybe we could, I don't know if you can see, the, the one on the right is the more recent version, and that's, so suddenly he appears in the one that was, uh, appears in the uh, Musawi trial documents. But that's still not him, okay. He was designated as Hanjur in all of the associate, the, the man on the left in dark, who doesn't look like him at all, uh, was uh, in all of the associated press releases, which received their information from the government, accompanied by the Dallas video premiere on July 22nd, 2004. Okay, the f so with the more recent 2006 uh, version um, came the debut of this new improved poster. And the reason I'm saying that, if you take a close look at his head, he's got some hair up there, right? Uh, or maybe he's just wearing a toupee. All right, next one of the real, there we go. That is the, the real Hanjour at an ATM just before 9-11-2001. So he's thinner, lacking facial hair, and lighter than his predecessor, um, the, the second imposter. Maybe go back to the... But he still has substantial hair in his head, and that disqualifies him as Hanjur, who had a substantially receding hairline, almost bald. His facial resemblance is problematic, too, as are most of the faces, due to the fact that in his clear 2000 version, as people approach the camera, the smudges suddenly uh, come up and vanish their faces. They become faceless. All right, so let's run the D Dallas Airport video now. Well, before we run it, I, I, go ahead, um, go back to it. With example of the faceless people, they become faceless. Um, that's that's not uh, heavy makeup smearing, by the way. It's typical of what happens to most everyone when they come in, in, into view in, in, in the foreground. Someone someone deliberately disguised them. 
Historically, Hani Hanju was one of the most traveled of all the alleged in and out of the United States, many times as he resided here on and off for the previous 10 years. Conceivably, he could have smoothly cleared the checkpoint in a matter of 30 seconds or less, but the man who appeared as the solo Arab in between the arrivals of the Arab du duos um, would not have me merited much attention for one very important reason, he was not Hanju at all. Hence, challenging the integrity of Dulles' video is the fact that the FBI and the commission, having access to the, the, like this ATM photo of Hanjur, would surely have noticed that the man dressed in dark slacks and dark short sleeve shirt does not remotely resemble Hanjur, yet they apparently tried to pass him off. From all the accounts we have of Hani Hanjur, he was slightly built, okay, thin, gaunt, just over five feet tall. So, um, The U.S. government had as its best evidence the Dulles video purportedly showing them preparing to board a plane that they said crashed into the Pentagon. All six of these problems, however, combined to undermine the Dulles video's authenticity and corroborate its forgery. It's the flimsiest evidence upon which the entire weight of the official story collapses. No airport security video has appeared for the other flights, therefore, no evidence exists that any of the so-called hijackers ever boarded planes that crashed on 9-11. The bin Laden confession video forgery, I'm just gonna mention this briefly. Um, it, it's, everybody who's seen it can see that the guy in it wasn't him. Uh, for, well, they should be able to notice it. The major proof the Bush administration touted to incriminate bin Laden, hijackers, and Al-Qaeda, this, this bin Laden that appeared in the uh, in the so-called bin Laden confession video, was a rotund, jolly bin Laden imposter who praised the five great martyrs who turned up alive after 9-11. However, inaccuracies and distortions of White House and Pentagon translations from the Arabic went unreported in American press. Saudi experts and German investigators like have found these translations manipulative in misleading American people. Correctly translated, the Bin Laden video, far from providing proof to support the official story, actually discredits itself and the official story. Ali al-Ahmed, al director of the Saudi Institute, accurately translates Bin Laden, identifying nine of the suspected hijackers by name, Mohammed Atta, Nawaf al-Hazmi, Salem al-Hazmi, and, quote, four from the al-Ghamdi tribe, and, quote, two others, both named al-Shehri. Now, it's difficult to, to if, if the two that were on the original FBI list weren't on that list, it's difficult to realize how we would be doing that. And of, of these nine that Bin Laden is in the, the Bin Laden in that video names, only five, including Wa'il and Walid al-Sheri, Salem al-Hazmi, Saeed al-Ghamdi, turned up alive. In, in other words, the Bin Laden imposter he, here is erroneously praising some men who did not martyr themselves. Okay, now we move on to um, the covert intelligence use of doubles to frame Zia Jera and, by implication, Al Qaeda. <clears throat> the role of doubles shed significant explanatory light on the entire covert operation of 9-11. Maybe we can run the tape while I'm talking about that because there's not gonna be time. <coughs> I'm gonna let you look at the video and while I'm talking, see if you see any uh, cars moving by in the background on that roadway that I mentioned. Without the discovery of their existence, 9-11 would be, an, uh, without the discovery of the doubles, 9-11 would be an impossible riddle. According to uh, Webster Tarpley, doubles not only explain the apparently impossible, they are extremely useful in standard covert intelligence practice. Quote, if there is something the terrorist controllers need a patsy to do, but which the patsy is unwilling or incapable of accomplishing, then a double will step in to see that the necessary action is indeed carried out. Recall the Lee Harvey Oswald doubles, whose several appearances in 1963 made it seem like Oswald was in two places at once. If there were a Lee Harvey Oswald award for 9-11, it would certainly go to Zia Jara and his doubles. Doubles were used to frame Zia uh, Jara and therefore and thereby implicate Al-Qaeda. On January 30th, 2001, 
A four-hour interrogation of Zia Jera transpired in the Dubai Emirates airport, which is a known CIA intercept point, which Jera, in quotes, meaning his double, simply walked into. During the interrogation, this Jera, the double, said that he had spent, quote, the previous two months and five days, unquote, in Pakistan and Afghanistan, where bin Laden's al-Qaeda training stronghold was located, and said he was returning to Florida. But he did not. Upon release from interrogation, according to CNN's McVicker and Farage, quote, Jara boarded a KLM flight in the early hours of January 31st and flew to Europe. Someone must have inputted, quote, national security override, unquote, into a U.S. government into US government computers next to his name for, in the next seven months before 9-11, at least one of the two Jiras would travel to the US, Lebanon, Germany, and back to the US without so much as metaphorically raising an intelligence agency's eyebrow. After 9-11, investigators confirmed that Jira had spent at least three weeks in January 2001 at an, at an Al-Qaeda training camp in Afghanistan, unquote. However, this itinerary must belong to Jarrah's double because, according to Arnie Krutoff's uh, Fly Florida Flight Training Center, Jarrah, where he trained, Jarrah had been a student there continuously for the previous six months, and because the flight school there confirmed he was there in Venice, Florida until January 15, 2001, with the flight school's confirmation, we already know that the Zia Jara at Florida Flight Training Center could not have been at the one at the Al-Qaeda camp in Afghanistan and later, later passing through Dubai. Moreover, the testimony of, of Zia, oh, you want to switch to a next one? Yeah, well, we can look at Jara's from the Musawi document. Moreover, the testimony of Zia's family that he arrived in Lebanon in January um, 26 to be with his father who had just undergone open heart surgery, and that he visited his father in the hospital every day until after January 30th, corroborates Ziad's whereabouts and eliminates the possibility of his presence in Dubai en route from Afghanistan. So it had to be Ziad Jarrah's double, a covert intelligence operative who just waltzed into the known CIA intercept as if the whole episode had been scripted in advance. Both Emirati and European intelligence sources confirmed the following to CNN, quote, the questioning of Jara fits a pattern of a CIA operation begun in 1999 to track suspected al-Qaeda operatives who were traveling through the United Arab Emirates. These sources told CNN that UAE officials were often told in advance by U U.S. officials which persons were coming through the country and, and whom they, the CIA, wanted questioned. One source provided CNN with a drawing of the Dubai airport and described how people wanted for questioning were intercepted, most often at a transit desk. U.S. officials declined to comment on whether the CIA operated this way at the Dubai airport, of course. Um, keeping in mind the purpose and historical role of the double in covert intelligence agency operations, this particularly well-prepared double, who not only supplied documentation, but also five years later, after someone had doctored the U.S. visa photo, well, you know, maybe you can show the view. Uh, that's, that's good. Um, comp cr compressing it horizontally and lightening the eyes expression, presumably for release in the 2006 Musawi trial exhibits. I don't know if you can see that. We, we go on to the Musawi trial exhibit and we'll see if we can, is this large enough? If, if you just, when you looked at the previous view, we study this picture on the Musawi trial documents. I don't think you can see it that well. But it's, it, it's in the photograms that I have that are larger in the beginning of my chapter in the update. His, his uh, head has been compressed horizontally and the eyes have been lightened to presumably for release in the 2006 Musawi trial exhibits where he first shows up to, to uh, more closely resemble Jero's look. This operation smacks a well-orchestrated setup geared to call attention to this incident as one that would later incriminate uh, not only Jarrah but also Al-Qaeda. Through the double co uh, covert operative Jarrah's sojourn and three-month stay in Al-Qaeda stronghold Afghanistan, he became the desired link that moles inside the U.S. government needed to pin the 9-11 rap on Al-Qaeda. Another piece of evidence that should have cast suspicion on this Jarrah Jara double is in the fact that he carried a valid U.S. multiple entry visa in his passport, a fragment of which conveniently horizontally compressed, it could be said, by the heat that left it one-third singed 
but which should have totally obliterated it. It should be said uh, through the heat partially melting, it, turning it up, it turned up in the uh, Flight 93 debris field. This fragment of evidence, its identification by uh, Emirati officials in Dubai as belonging to the multiple entry visa they inspected there, combined with the fact that the person carrying this visa and passport could not have been the real Ziad Jarrah because he was in Florida and Lebanon while his double was showing up in Afghanistan and Dubai, effectively clears the accused Ziad Jarrah of involvement in 9-11 and of the U.S. government charges against him. <clears throat> Okay, so um, during questioning by Emiratis, this Jarrah, 26 years old, divulged that he has spent the previous months there in Afghanistan, and he had that visa, uh, the multiple entry visa. The controllers of Jarrah's double probably could not have anticipated the real Jarrah's father's open heart surgery or that someone in management at the flight school he attended would, would supply the exact dates of his presence there, especially after Jeb Bush had shown up 2 a.m. on the morning after 9-11 to personally supervise the massive confiscation of police station and flight school records by the FBI as they were loaded, file cabinets and all, into Ryder rental trucks, trucks and then onto a C-130 transport to be flown into the Bermuda Triangle for all we know. <laughs> but since the controllers had apparently picked the wrong time for Jerry's double to, to visit Bin Laden's, Bin Laden's Al Qaeda camp and incriminate his namesake, the plan didn't entirely work and documentation of exist the existence of Jarrah's double has been possible. How much time do I have? Oh, okay, good. Um, now we move on to the photographic evidence of two Zia Jarrahs ignored by the Nyland Commission. Uh, PowerPoint, yeah. The, um, the one with both, just the two. Yeah, okay, no, no, go back, yeah, great. Okay, um, of the Jarrah photo Jira photographs released through the media, the 1999 Lebanese passport with a circular ink stamp. Oh, okay, that's not the right one. <laughs> oh, okay, I don't have them numbered, uh, so yeah. That, there it is, yeah, okay. These are the real Zia Jira, okay. Um, his 1999 uh, Lebanese passport on the left, especially clear photo representative of all but one other photograph, which is the US visa photograph, one third burnt away that was recovered from the wreckage. The, that passport photo shows market differences from the rest. Okay, you wanna go on to the next one? Yeah, the one on the, you, this is the, the ZIJ I'm talking about now is the one on the left that we had earlier. Um, that passport photo shows market differences. The nose and cheeks are full with higher well-defined cheekbones and the hair is wavy. That's the one I call the Tom Jones look-alike. Um, another factor which calls the authenticity of the paper passport photo of Jarrah into question is its miraculous survival after the black box was never found and most of uh, United Airlines 93 flight wreckage was either reduced to ashes or blown to bits or ground to a pulp. It is highly likely this passport photograph was planted. All the best evidence shows the accused Jarrah was framed by the covert ops who introduced at least two doubles we've been, at least two doubles we've been able to document. But the 9 the Commission report never considered the documented, documented existence of either Zia Jarrah's double in their report of any Zia Jarrah's double. <coughs> Providing neither proof nor evidence of Jarrah's guilt, their report just assumes his guilt by association with statements like, in Hamburg, he apparently never resided with his future co-conspirators. It is not clear how and when he became part of Atta's circle. Okay, so now the best evidence that Jarrah was framed is he was born Sunni, but educated in Christian schools. He grew up in a well-to-do secular environment. Uh, he had dozens of friends, classmates, instructors, family, and landlords. They were all interviewed, and they all testified he was apolitical, non-religious, more a jet setter than a, than a jet pilot, uh, je like, well-liked, outgoing, friendly, and loved to party. A friend who once led him to mosque, Abdul Rahman al Makadi, called Jarrah a quote, weak Muslim, unquote. Finally, all his uh, Florida flight school classmates avoided flying with Jarrah. When the word got out that he was a lousy pilot, <laughs> student pilot, the US government has never provided a flight manifest or any other evidence to show Jarrah ever boarded 
replete with innuendo, hearsay, forged documents, and fabrications, the legend of Jarrah's, the official legend of Jarrah's U.S. state deviates significantly from the facts and eyewitness accounts and uses media complicity to distort his character. Um, there is also, uh, for example, the, invest the investigative media should have asked why, according to the St. Petersburg Times in Florida, quote, Jarrah, the imposter, already had a pi pilot's license in 1999. Well, they called him just Jarrah, but it, it had to be the imposter because when the real Jarrah had not yet attended flight school until the summer of 2000, moreover demonstrating sub-average skills trying to obtain one. On July 25, 2001, Jarrah, who had not been getting along with Atta, this is like a couple of months before 9-11, decided to leave Florida, apparently for, get, for good, because his ticket was a one-way from Miami to Dusseldorf, Germany, to rejoin his fiancée, Sengren. Uh, from that date on, Jarrah is literally not Jarrah, and there are, or Jarrah is not literally not Jarrah, and there are increased signs of the insertion of at least one double. Although they say he was somehow persuaded to return the following month, wouldn't handlers need him close by for liquidation? That one-way ticket signaled a parting of ways. And typically, when a patsy becomes uncooperative in a covert intelligence operation, the handlers are prepared to substitute doubles. Given the stakes here, they could no longer rely on the real Jarrah. Other documented evidence for Jarrah doubles includes the following. One, in Venice, a second residence exists for Jarrah where the real Jarrah never stays while attending flight school. On July 10th, 2001, the double Jarahi, or Jara with a little I after it, Ziad, renting at uh, it, Charles, Charles Lisa's Lauderdale by the Sea property, fraudulently produces a duplicate Florida driver's license that changes his name to Ziad Samir Jara. That's the photo on your right. You'll notice that it wasn't uh, the original, it, it's the replacement or a duplicate and impossibly shows an original, original issue date of May 2nd, but the real Jarrah didn't move to that address until the end of June. Three, compare the original Jarrah Florida driver's license with its so-called replacement. Well, we can't do it because we haven't seen the original, but the, um, wait a second, we do have what's called, what's named an original, but it's the, it's the Harding Street Hollywood address. That you notice now that it shows a dark man who does not at all resemble Jarrah. And is uh, the Musawi trial exhibit photo in the, in the Musawi trial exhibit number MM00196. Now, um, can we go to the next one, that exhibit? The government exhibit pairs, and there's two exhibits here, left and right. There's two separate exhibits, and in both of them, Jarrah is paired. Well, the first exhibit pairs Jarrah's dark double with Gerard's Tom Jones lookalike double. So that's none of, neither of which are Gerard. The second one, uh, two different Gerard doubles coexist rather peculiarly. All right, that's the other one, precariously. Uh, the dates on the Florida driver's license, okay, we did that, the, suggest evidence tampering or forgery. However, the, the 1816 Harding Street on the Florida license was already, in fact, the Dark Doubles residence. Beginning on April 23, 2001, we know this because landlord uh, corroborated the use of the Dark Double when she said, quote, Jarrah rented at 1816 Harding Street in, in Hollywood from April, from April 23 to June 23, presenting a German passport and a student ID card as ID. That was Carol, the landlord at 1816 Harding Street, as to, you know, differentiated from landlord Charles Lisa at the Lauderdale by the Seas apartments, uh, where the dark double of Jarrah shows up on June 2nd, 2001, with another alleged hijacker's double, that of Ahmed Al-Haznawi. Let's, let's switch to, or find Al-Haznawi. Okay. Okay, uh, this was uh, documented, that they showed up there, was documented by Charles Lisa when he, quote, he says, he photocopied their German passports as proof of identity on June 2nd, 2001. But of course, all the Musari trial document shows is that incriminating 
photo of the dark um, Jera in a Florida license, not in a passport. They'd never, they would never provide the German passports, which was proof of identity on June 2nd, 2001, the day after Al Haznawi, the guy on your right, the double, departed Saudi Arabia with a passport stamped, quote, Bahrain International Airport, dated 1 June 2001. Coincidentally, um, Al the photograph of Al Haznawi, like the Jarrah's dark doubles, could easily have been doctored and spliced into a US visa because it was so dark, like the dark Jarrah's. After 9 11, uh, landlord Lisa said he provided the FBI with the photocopies of a Jar Jarrahi with an I and Al Haznawi's German passports, with, which the FBI confiscated and never made available, along with other evidence they found in the apartment. So at least one of Jarrah's doubles was a German national because he had a German passport. And those who have tried to obtain German passport, passports know that it's very difficult to do this unless you are a native German. An Al-Qaeda agent or any other foreign agent for that matter would not risk outing himself by producing such a sensitive document unless he were German or working as an unwitting patsy or both for an agency like CIA. And then four, after July, the Jarrah double is kept separate uh, from the other unsuspecting patsies who would naturally recognize the substitution. For example, on August 27, 2001, Jarrah's double registers at the Pindell Motel in L uh, Laurel, Maryland, a mile from the Valencia Motel where the others stayed the same week. Jarrah's signature, that of the double, uh, well, signature on the refund receipt also appears to be a forgery. Five, a radically different signature appears on the, on the uh, September 10th, 2001 suicide note to fiance Senguin. This letter's all too convenient misaddressing guaranteed its surfacing in officialdom. Besides, how could he forget an address they'd both lived at for over four years? And why would anyone carefully print his first and last names on an intimate note to his fiance? Sequestered in a German witness program, protection program soon after 9-11, the fiance Sanguin's reaction is effectively suppressed. Seven, also suppresses the fact that the Jera family proffered their DNA to the US government, but the FBI not only rejected it, they lied they did so. The Wikipedia site, this is also uh, very, uh, it's a pattern it's, it, that I've noticed that um, of substitutions or changes after our chapter came out and after the update in 2008, there were more changes. Um, it, it happened a couple of months. All right. The, the Wikipedia site had correctly stated that the Jera family proffered their DNA to the US government to clear their son's name, and that the FBI had implicitly refused this offer, never responding to it. Then, after I had noted these facts in my update to the hidden history of 9-11, the second edition in 2008, someone had gotten into the Wikipedia site. That was Our edition came out in July 2008. And, and, and somebody had gotten into the Wikipedia site in September 2008 and deleted this account of the Jera family offer the DNA, also broadcast publicly on Canadian CBC. When they interviewed Jamal Jera, the good uncle of Zia Jera, subsequently, the FBI pent bomb website stated under the section entitled DNA, quote, this is the F FBI, next of kin for Zia Jera, and the three other Flight 93 alleged have not provided DNA samples for comparison, unquote, an outright lie. Instead, the FBI said it went to the German BKA to obtain a search warrant for Jarrah's fiancé's residence. My question is, why have an entire residence comb for a DNA match when you've been offered the uh, family's DNA? Uh, and that method was pretty convenient for them because conveniently, uh, the uh, person that lived there, Sanguin, his fiance, was gone. You know, she was in the witness protection program. So there, there's another, there's a, a German connection too. Undercover CIA handlers surrounded Jera, and um, just one of them I wanted to mention. Um, his name is Pascal Schreier. Uh, he, like Mohammed Atta, was best friends with uh, Wolfgang Boringer, who turned up in a, on an island. I don't know if any, anybody knows this story, in the South Pacific, which came, he was arrested. By the uh, F, not by the FBI, but the FBI uh, rejected everything uh, letting, leading one to believe that Wolfgang was intimately associated with, uh, with Mohammed Atta. Wolfgang uh, Boringer 
was uh, the man that Atta called his brother. And he and about six other uh, German uh, people that this was all in a story on videotape, videotaped by Hopsicker. It's a story of uh, Amanda Keller, um, who was uh, a live-in uh, stripper with, uh, with Mohammed Atta in uh, Venice, Florida. Well, she, she uh, was able to, to out all this information. And then we find out that, um, that one of those other associates, who was both close friends with Wolfgang Boringer. By the way, when he, Boringer was apprehended because a, a friend, uh, not a friend, a, a person, American living on the island, just so happened to be familiar with uh, uh, Hopsicker's uh, investigative work and had seen his photograph. And uh, so he called it in, and it was picked up by New Zealand press and, and news. And then uh, that got out to the, so the, the Joint Terrorism Task Force had to go uh, and, and apprehend him. And when they showed up, uh, well, Wolfgang Boringer had a get out of jail free card, a free pass. He, he showed his, he says, you can't, you can't uh, arrest me, I'm CIA. Wow. Okay, so I, I've been instructed to move to the, <laughs> well, um, there's a lot more here. I just want to give a, a, a short conclusion then, if I can find it. An apparent campaign continues to this day, which, uh, one, changed news reports through introducing factual errors and errors of admission, two, altered evidence and timelines, three, created and substituted evidence, four, substituted other patsies to replace those who turned up alive after 9-11, five, intimidated witnesses into, into silence or recantation, six, blacked out real hijacker activities and whereabouts from all but local media, and seven, tampered with fabricated or hoaxed flight manifest documents and photos and videos. All these manipulations are executed to ensure the hijackers cover story, which continues as a diversion from the real perpetrators of 9-11-2001. Focusing on the 9-11 hijackers, we have shown that the U.S. government withheld cr uh, crucial evidence from the public for no justifiable reason, fabricated other evidence, and confiscated and destroyed still other evidence, which would prove that story a falsehood. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Jacob. We will, we will now invite the uh, panelists to uh, question Jay Kohler. Jay, could you remain at the... Uh, sure, okay. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, for the next 15 minutes, the panelists will, will have questions and exchanges with our right. expert witness. At the end of the day, uh, did any of these 19 guys actually get on an airplane? Well, that's a good question. I, oh, I'm sorry. That's a good question, and I don't, I couldn't find any, any hard evidence to show that. Uh, the, we, the, the only thing we have is that video, and uh, you could, if you look at it closely and you examine the faces of the uh, the four that were presented, that that you know, the Al Midhar. Uh, Which flight are we talking about? The, the only that would be flight 93, that the one that crashed. Um, in uh, Pennsylvania, um, none of them really. Uh, there's no data to substantiate that any of them really are the actual uh, ones named by the FBI and, and whose photos show that they were. Mm. Professor Johnson. Yes, <clears throat> um, I was fascinated by the two slides or the two pictures <clears throat> with the stripe moved. You must see it again. And. Uh, yeah. Uh, clearly, there are uh, two cameras uh, taking those pictures. Uh, have we ascertained that there actually uh, are not two cameras at Dulles? I, I, it just uh, seems to me very uh, surprising to, to see this movement of the stripe. Uh, or is that photoshopped? What do you think? What do you, how do you think they made that well, if, except those two separate pictures? Okay, if they photoshopped them, they'd have to photoshop the entire video. And that's pretty difficult. Um, this was released in 2004. I think it was a, a rush job. And uh, I, I think they tried to disguise it by the intervening uh, 38 seconds of a close-up, you know, zoomed in, of Al Midhar. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't remember, you know, that it was changed. But as to the, that is a good question, but it's very difficult to do. They have the facilities that do it, certainly. And I think that's the reason why you didn't see 
the other setup, which you see on, on the left there, in the new improved version of the Dulles video, which was released. Um, they, well, they said it was released with the uh, Musawi trial documents. It's in the Musawi trial docu documents. You can find it there. It's a 500 megabyte. Uh, I wasn't able to download it because of the 500 megabyte. Uh, but um, that, that 2006 final version only shows the camera set up centered over that floor line, not the other one. But this, this is evidence. We have photographs which were um, the photogram on the left is from a still taken of that video. Somebody captured it, you know, and grabbed it, and uh, uh, researchers, investigators did that. Yeah. Uh, a follow-up question. <clears throat> the, uh, there are quite a number of um, opportunities to photograph uh, with uh, security cameras uh, these individuals as they boarded the planes, but we have not seen those. Uh, why haven't we seen them? <laughs> We, we should all be wondering that at this point. I have no answer, but that the government refuses, re, flatly refuses to uh, submit that evidence. Also, well, the government also said that there weren't any video, there weren't any security cameras in any of the other airports, such as uh, Boston Logan or, or Newark. No, there weren't any video cameras. What, what were you using them for? I mean, <laughs> but there were video cameras with the, you know, the, the security data on them in this tiny Portland, Maine jet port. Signor Imposimato. I am, uh, <coughs> uh, I am uh, surprised because I have thought that uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, dunque, Collar, Collar yes. was a direct witness. Oh. Uh, I think that you are an expert, an expert, who, uh, and uh, that you have worked uh, on the base of document that you have acquired by the trial uh, against Musawi because uh, you have shown some document coming from uh, Musawi trial, yes? That we have not here. So I think that it should be better to get the document that you showed us this, this morning mm. coming from the Musawi document. How do you get the document from Musawi uh, trial. Well, it, 500 megabytes is a lot to download, and my, my computer wouldn't do it. Uh, and I'm going to work on that, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really try to get it. Okay. By the way, did anybody notice any cars going by in the background? No. Oh, <laughs> all right. Yes, but uh, <laughs> the problem is that uh, you. We believe you, but we have to assess the, the, uh, the, the, the original document if it is possible, because the, this document are uh, available because the, the trial is finished. Mosawi has, has been convicted. So uh, uh, it is for, uh, for you uh, possible to show us uh, as the document that you have uh, showed in this moment, and the f video, uh, other thing, I, w I would like to know, you have showed you uh, some photo, and uh, in order to prove that uh, some terrorists are uh, different from the terrorist uh, who has been killed in the, uh, uh, in the yeah. attack of the, uh, the September 19. Yes, I, I would like to know uh, also uh, from where you have uh, had this photo, this photo. This, do you have shown the, docu the, the, the photo of the, do you have told that uh, the photo of Mr. <coughs> Ahmed Aznawi or Jihad Samir Jara, are the, do have, you have showed before some different photo of the same okay. terrorist. Oh, Haznawi? Yes. All right. Um, well, and you yeah. have told that this, oh, okay. uh, this, <laughs> this photo represents uh, two different uh, uh, persons. Are you talking about 
Jara in this one, or El Hasnawi, the other uh, double? Because, all right, how do you do the page up down? Or? No, I get it with Altra. I get it. Yes. The, I, I All right. Well, there's that intervening section. Um, when you when you make a comparison between this two, uh, this this okay. one, the this one, one Ahmed mm -hmm. Alaznawi, you mm -hmm. say that uh, one the the, the the person who was killed is different from mm -hmm. the official. Well, I I'm sorry, but I have to interrupt you That's because none of them we have no proof that. Either of these were gentlemen were killed. They're just the, the photos that the FBI presents to us in their, you know, in the document we have both of them. But it turns out that the double here on the right showed up later, uh, I said on June second, two thousand one. And 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 uh, uh, do you think that uh, they are different person? This this one. I, I, well, it I do, I do. It seems to me that they, that they are the same. Well, if you look at the it's lips, a, it's a, the it's lips of the question. one. Okay, the lips so of the one on the right are no, fuller. He's he's heavier set. It is very difficult to question to yeah. establish now if uh, it was uh, a substi substitution. Substitution of the. It is very difficult. Uh, question to establish now mm. if the, uh, the the official debt of uh, 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 September 19 is a, uh, is a, is a, uh, official is different from the the true debt yes because these two pictures mm -hmm. seems to me uh, the the same uh, pertaining to the same person I am not expert. Right. I think that uh, we need one expert mm -hmm. like you that can confirm yeah. your, affirmative, your statement. Yes, right. because it is very important uh, to establish if these persons are the same or are not the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is my, una, uh, uh, my consideration. Yes, not not because I don't believe you, right. but uh, it, it is difficult. Uh, to speak about the opinion, uh, about suggestion, about uh, uh, appearance, appearance, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, another question concerns the, 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 the film, the, the video that you showed the airport of, uh, of Dallas, mm -hmm. Dallas airport. Mm -hmm. You got this film, official film, from the Mosawi trial, no. Uh, yeah, this is this is a uh, oh. same. This is the same video, only it's a shortened version of it. We get six minutes now. You know, the, in the two thousand, well, the alleged two thousand six release. When I went into the Mosawi documents shortly after the, the trial, and the, that video was not available there. Now it is. I don't know exactly when, but I'm calling it the 2006 Dulles release because that's when the Masari, you know, documents were released. I, I believe it was August 2006. And that's a, just a segment of it, I guess. Actually, though, I have no proof that uh, that that six minutes you have there is not the original. Maybe it's just enhanced, uh, you know, by uh, technology, a, a higher. Uh, resolution, and that's why it's 500 uh, milligram, uh, megabytes. megabytes, sorry. <laughs> but uh, if you spoke about the relatives of some of this uh, hijacker, and uh, th 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 this is, there is uh, the some relative of, of Zia Jara, right. uh, yeah. that is told that uh, the, the debt is different from the, from the, the debt the official. Well, it, that's corroborated by um, the, ev uh, the evidence um, that he was at the hospital visiting with the family, uh, other relatives, and then uh, it's corroborated. They corrob give DNA. DNA. They, they, yeah, they chose, they, they offered their DNA. But and that they want to prove that uh, the death. That they're, they clear their son's name. The, the death is different from the death. Uh, the, the, the relative is different from the death. No, I, I, I mean the death. I am not. You mean, 
Well, you mean, I guess if you're talking about the dates that, uh, he, he, I'm saying the dates are the same, that uh, Jared's family had uh, him in Lebanon, uh, his father, he was visiting his father in a hospital, are uh, the same as the time when he was uh, either in Dubai or uh, coming back from Pakistan and Afghanistan. And, uh, and the same dates that he was allegedly in Pakistan and Afghanistan, he was already, uh, he was still at the, uh, Florida and flight, and flight so you, you think that uh, should be necessary uh, expertise on DNA of this person? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Necessary uh -huh. expertise on the DNA of the person. Uh, should be, yeah. uh, should, be nece should need the expertise well, on DNA and the in DNA of this uh -huh. person. Well, by now, uh, another thing which is problematic is that the, uh, the government said that they took this DNA not from uh, Jarrah's uh, uh, remains in, 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 the, uh, in the crash site, but from a, a, a collection of remains of the people, uh, the other ones that weren't uh, regular passengers. You know? And so it, it's, li it's possible that um, somebody else got in there uh, to the apartment that was one of the other people and uh, you know, framed them. But um, it, it's, uh, it's still really um, shaky evidence, I believe. They should have gone to the family for the DNA, not to some place and say, oh, yeah, there's the DNA. You know. uh, to me, the match with what the, the entire story seems very suspect by the FBI. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We, we, we have time for one more question yes. from the um, panelist, uh, Professor Mr. Lee. Mr. Kohler, I do appreciate the tremendous effort that is evidenced here in the work that you've done. But I have to, uh, have to respectfully suggest that the, um, because you skip from one hijack, alleged hijacker to another, and you skip from one kind of evidence to another, that you actually succeed in, in the goals of the government to cover it up because it's too confusing. So uh, I commend you for your work, but I desperately would seek to have some clarity either by a, a clear narrative thread. This is the story of one hijacker. I'm going to take it through. Uh, or, uh, or both, uh, then say these are the six kinds of uh, frauds that have been perpetrated, or the six ways in which the data has been manipulated, and then you know make that your narrative thread. So, I respectfully suggest that we, uh, at, at, well, as the material now uh, constitutes itself, it uh, doesn't really give us any point of traction to work with. Well, uh, to answer that response, uh, I, I have a lot more material on Zia Jera and his, uh, you know, the evidence that he's been framed, the evidence that he has at least two different doubles, and there's a, a, a a pre-story to that too, with another Zia Jera double that appeared earlier, but I didn't have time to present all of it in this presentation. I wanted to actually, I thought it would be better to get into the, for this presentation to show a multiplicity, and so you're, you're correct on that point. I, I should have focused on him, and I, I actually did in the, in the update to my chapter, in the chapter, but uh, it's, not avail it's not possible to do that in a short presentation. Thank you very much, panelists, oh, okay. and thank you, Jay Kohler, for your presentation.